Jimmy in Oklahoma says, Hey, Dutch and James, I don't recall you guys talking about Cowboy James Storm. More importantly, his so-called boo-boo face when he had to do the job. Any good James Storm stories? And are there any other TNA guys who also had the boo-boo face that you can recall? So I don't know anything about this. So did James Storm have a boo-boo face? No, I don't think so. He, he might not have liked it. I don't remember the boo-boo face. But they are some guys that you tell them that they, they want to lose. Oh, my God. It's like the end of the world. Oh, my God. You think they want to kill themselves. I said, what's the deal, man? Because, see, I'm used to going out there and doing it. Sometimes I would rather do it than go over. Because as a heel, as a heel, I'm expected to get beat. So I can do that. And this is what. You know, I told I told you about uh, maybe the last show I talked about working with referees. This show, that was this show. Okay, this okay. I'm working working with referees, but that's the last thing the fans remember. They don't remember that I lost. They remember the what I did with the referee, or they remember I used to I used to pitch what I call a, a big hissy fit. I don't know what y'all call them in. No, it's, it's like a baby. The that's the same. Yeah, a big hissy fit, and I would lose the match, and I would I'd go over in the corner like I'm crying. <laughs> People say, oh, stop. And I said, hey. And then I'd go to the ring, and I'm just so incensed. I'd just jump up in the air and just beat the mat. And they'd get a big pop out of that. Then I would take the mic, and I said, thanks to your rudeness and crudeness, and I would like to announce publicly right now, d due to you, your particular behavior tonight, I'm announcing I will never, ever come back to this town again. And I leave. Oh, and that got a big pop. But see, that was better than the match. Because they would remember that instead of me just going in and getting beat. And the last thing they see me is laying flat in the ring. At least I had life. So they would leave. You know, they wouldn't say, oh, Dutch got beat tonight. They'd say, well, that's pissed damn big fit at the end of it, didn't he? And that's what they remember. That's what I wanted them to remember. So, so what, was, what was the question? Well, <laughs> let's, no, no, it did relate. Uh, let's have some names out of you then. Not like main event people. You know, like Steve Austin or something like that, where it really would have mattered whether he won or lost. But someone who was on the undercard who would fight you tooth and nail over a win or a loss. Do you remember any names? Uh not right off hand, but see, WWE, they know better than the pitch fit because they just let them go. They wouldn't put up with it at all. TNA at one point tried to assuage, assuage guys, convince guys that it was in their best interest to do it. And of course, if, if, if it was part of the angle, I mean, it, 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 it fit the angle with James, James Storm. And I like James Storm. I think he's a great worker. He's a good friend. But I never remember. But he didn't give a crap. I don't remember. But, but if it was part of the angle, he, he was fine. Now, I can see his reluctance. When we're just going to go out and beat him for no reason. You know, because that's... He had been pushed pretty hard in the company, so him going out there and doing this for whoever didn't make a lot of sense. So I don't blame him there. Uh, some of the other guys, uh, let me think this guy's name. Do you want me to he pause did anything, a thing. Yeah, pause a minute. Okay, then. Okay, you thought of a name, Dutch? I have thought of a name. <laughs> and I like this guy, and his name was Loki. Loki did not like, like to lose <laughs> because the most you can remember when you meet Loki is he has a different look about him, but his voice, what is the purpose of me losing? Mm. <laughs> and, uh, and I would try to tell him, whoever was giving him the finish would try to tell him, yeah, is we going to do this and this and this. I don't see the value in <laughs> I don't see the value in this. Yeah, but and again, I don't blame him because 
to be in the wrestling business. I mean, as, as a booker and as an agent, you don't want to hear that because now you got to say, well, yeah, but it's, we're going to do something with this. And sometimes you're just making it up. But if you're in the wrestling business, if you don't think you need to be in the main events, then you really don't, you don't need to be there. You got to think that you are more valuable and uh, the the best worker on the card is called ego. Mm-hmm. But if you don't really have that ego and that personality, you really don't need to be there because you got to think that you're the best and go out there and try to prove it every night. So I don't blame guys for that, but sometimes they are difficult to work with.